What's up, Broncos fans? Coming up on today's show, we got an update to some Russell Wilson trade talk. He spoke about it, actually, so we'll show you that quote. Also, some Vic Fangio and Broncos head coach rumors. We'll dive into those, and it's some hardware time for Sertan and Williams. I'll tell you about the awards they are bringing home, and we'll wrap up the show with the worst for last, some COVID-19 updates as the team has had kind of a minor-ish outbreak. But let's kick things off by talking about Russell Wilson. Could he possibly be playing in his final game in Seattle as a Seahawk this Sunday? Maybe, maybe not. I sure hope so, because if it's that, if that's the case, that would tell me he would maybe be on his way to Denver. And with that being said, Broncos country, you should be pulling hard for the Lions this Sunday, because here's why. If Detroit comes into Seattle, and that's a two-win Detroit team, and beats the Seahawks, you have to imagine that's going to leave a bad taste in Russell Wilson's mouth about the direction the franchise is going, and maybe he wants to get a change of scenery. The Bears went in there last week. They pulled off a comeback and won. Let another NFC North team come in there, beat up on the Seahawks, and make Russell Wilson go, you know what, I think we've had a good run, but let's just shake hands and move apart. I think what's interesting to note, though, is I personally don't believe Russell Wilson is going to come out and demand a trade. One, that's just not really a part of his character. He doesn't strike me as that guy. He strikes me as a guy who's going to tell his agent to tell someone in Seattle media Wilson wants a trade, and then Wilson will come out and say, I never said that, even though he told someone to tell someone to tell someone to say that, because that's just the way Wilson operates. But here's what Wilson said. He was asked about whether or not this could be his last game in Seattle as a Seahawk, and he said, I know for me, I hope it's not my last game in Seattle as a Seahawk. But at the same time, I know it won't be my last game in the NFL. Bum, bum, bum. I'm addicted to Russell Wilson trade talk. Give it to me. Uh, any day of the week because, yeah, right in my veins, I, I need to go to rehab for this because the Russell Wilson trade talk is what I have been living on because Teddy Bridgewater is not the future for Denver. We all know that. I don't think this draft class offers much of a future for quarterbacks. And if Russell Wilson, a proven talent and a Super Bowl winner, and in my opinion, on pace to be a Hall of Famer, wants to come to Denver and do what Peyton Manning did, which is win a Super Bowl at the end of his career, except Russell Wilson is only 33, 34 years old. He could have another 10 years left. Let us play those 10 years in Denver. That is exactly what I want. Because look at Tom Brady. Look at how well he takes care of his body. He's 44. Don't tell me Wilson doesn't take care of his body the same way. He's missed a couple games in his entire career. Took him all the way till year seven, eight this year for him to miss a single start. Yeah, I could see Wilson playing into his 40s and let him have some gray hair in Denver. I'm all for it. With the end of the year wrapping up, we want to pose this question to you guys. I'm curious, how likely are you to recommend us to other Broncos fans? Scale for me 1 to 10 down below. We're just doing some quick uh, housekeeping notes, and we want to know what we do well, what we can improve on. We're going into 2022. Appreciate all of you guys that watch the channel. Comment below. I do it all for you. My job wouldn't be possible without you guys, so appreciate you all so much. And if you love the channel, send it to someone else. Let's grow this channel. Let's grow this Broncos empire we've got here at Chat Sports. Going back to Russell Wilson, though, here's a trade idea I cooked up in the lab. Russell Wilson to the Broncos. You could toss in like a seventh-round pick in 2023. That's pocket change. The Seahawks, they get this haul. 2022, first and second. Now, keep in mind, Denver's got five picks in the top 100 this upcoming draft. Two seconds, two-thirds, and, of course, their own first. So they only have – they give up two picks uh, in the 2022 NFL draft in terms of, like, the top – Two days, I'm not too shabby about that. Uh, 2023, a first and a third. So two firsts, a second and a third. And then you give a starting center because whoever's going to be replacing Russell Wilson, maybe it's Drew Locke or maybe Denver or maybe Seattle goes to the draft to find a replacement. They're going to want that new quarterback to have an upgrade at the offensive line. So you got to spend money to make money. It's the price of doing business. So you lose your starting center. I think Cushenberry is a great center in the NFL, but I would absolutely take that casualty to get Russell Wilson. But that's my idea. I want to know what you have to think about it. Would you do this trade? Give me a T for trade or P for pass. Let me know where you stand on this. I get it. That's a lot of draft capital to surrender. But for me, here's my opinion. 
Where do I sign? That's what I want to know. Do you want it in black ink? Do you want it in blue ink? You want me to do different colors? I don't care. I'm all for whatever it takes to get Russell Wilson to Denver. He is a future Hall of Fame quarterback, in my opinion. We don't need to talk about the Super Bowl he won, but we all know what Russell Wilson is capable of. Is he a little weird? Maybe. But he wins a lot, and that's all I care about. So I'm all for whatever it takes to get Russ in Denver. Broncos fans, if you guys want this blockbuster trade to happen, then subscribe. Because here's why. I can't tell you that if you subscribe, the trade's an absolute guarantee. But what I can tell you is that if you subscribe, when, slash hopefully, slash if this trade happens, a video will be coming your way immediately. There will be sirens going off. All the bells and whistles will be going at you guys. Yeah, new, new. We'll be ready for the trade. So make sure you are subscribed if you love Broncos news and rumors and off-season stuff because there's no NFL off-season. That's the way the, the league works. So stay in the know all year long. We'll be giving you content all year long. Switching gears, on to the next story here on today's show. Vic Fangio, maybe he's not going somewhere. We got some uh, updated rumors on the upcoming, well, potential, I shouldn't say upcoming, potential head coaching head coaching search for the Broncos because it's looking like for three straight years, Fangio will have missed the postseason in Denver. Here's what I find a little interesting. The Broncos have not fi fired Vic Fangio, which means they're missing out on the opportunity to interview other coaches. It's a new rule this year where teams who have already fired slash told their head coach, hey, you're adios, sayonara, they can get a two-hour Zoom interview with other assistants across the, link, across the league. You've seen the Jags do it so far. The Raiders are going to get busy. The Broncos are not opting into this, meaning they're sticking with Fangio, which if you're going to fire the guy, one would think you would kind of get the ball rolling so you can get ahead of other teams, right? That's just my two cents on this. We'll come back to this graphic in just a moment, but first, check out BetUS. Our sportsbook partner has great deals going on for you guys. Where all you got to go is chatsports.com slash bet. Use that promo code Broncos125. Make sure you use the 125% uh, you, you get the 125% deposit bonus. And then here at ChatSports, we're going to Add on to that, a little cherry on the top here, a Fanatics jersey on us. That is right. When you email us, jersey at chatsports.com, make sure you sign up, go through all those steps I mentioned earlier, and then email us, jersey at chatsports.com with your BetUS account number, a screenshot of your first bet. Do you want a Jerry Judy size uh, large? What color do you want in? Maybe you want a Bradley Chubb jersey. We've got those two jerseys. We've got the sizes. We've got the colors. So make sure you check this deal out. It won't last forever, all right? But you've got to follow those steps. Go to chatsports.com slash bet. Use that promo code Broncos125. You get that deposit bonus. Make your first bet. Email us with your BetUS account number, a screenshot of your first bet. I'll have that email in the comments and the description of this video. Jersey at chatsports.com. Going back to Vic Fangio. He is going full Wolf of Wall Street mode of, I ain't fucking leaving. He is not going anywhere, at least in his mind he isn't, because he's got a good idea of why he may not be leaving, actually. Here's a couple things playing in Fangio's favor. One, he's still here. And if the Broncos were going to make a change, maybe they would have already done it already so they could start interviewing people. Also going in Fangio's favor, a new owner is likely going to be coming in for Denver after this season. This new owner, let's say they come, let's say Bezos. It's, not, it's not, probably not going to be Bezos. Let's say Bezos buys the team in March. He's already got Vic Fangio there or a new head coach. I would guess he'd want to be a part of the new head coaching search, right? That would kind of make sense. You own the team. You want to be, you want to pick who's in charge. So they're not going to wait on a new, you can't wait till a new owner in March to hire a new head coach. You got to hire one in January. So maybe Fangio goes, hey, you can't fire me because what are you going to do? Hire a new guy. And then when the new owner comes in, they don't want that new guy. You got to roll with me. I could be rolling in his favor. But with that all said, here's my posing question to you guys. If Denver wins out, and this is not going to get them in the playoffs, but it would leave them above 500 for the first time in Fangio's era, would that change your mind on him? Give me a C for a change. It'll change your mind, yeah. Or S, you're staying put. Doesn't matter what happens over these next two games. Win or lose, my mind is made up. What I'll say that is this. Don't let the last two games change your mind about what has been pretty much three years in Denver, and that is... No offensive continuity, 
lack of a rhythm and consistency on offense, and probably the biggest McDonald's overarching theme, you can't win the big games. I understand it's difficult to go into Kansas City and knock off the Chiefs on Sunday Night Football, but there have been moments like the Raiders game on the road, the Chiefs game this year, where Denver, after getting off to a 3-0 start, couldn't just jump on the big ones, you know? And that has been a bit of a trend for the Broncos in the last three years, and I get it. Fangio's had an amazing defense, and his offense has had a rotating door at quarterback, but if you run it back with him, I think you're just kind of going in circles a little bit. We're going to go on a bit of a more positive note. we got some champagne, so pop that champagne. we got some awards coming up on today's show because there's one thing that's for sure, uh, for sure right now in Denver. They've got a good one in their GM. George Payton has made some awesome draft picks so far, and those draft picks have lived up to the hype. Starting with Patrick Sertan, he was named to two publications, all rookies team. Yeah. Uh, those being NFL.com and Football Outsiders, along with Sertan. Javante Williams also was named to those exact two uh, all rookie teams. So, Home run pick so far in your first two picks as a GM, George Payton, right? You can nail the one on Sertan, I like to think. We won't talk about the quarterbacks because that's a day for a, a conversation for another day. And Williams, who looks like a stud running back. Sertan this year, I mean, the numbers, they speak for themselves. Four interceptions. He's got that touchdown uh, return against the Chargers. How about the first game? Remember the, I mean, the, the preseason, the Vikings game, we had that pick six. And then Williams this year. The thing with Williams is when you watch him play, you know how special he is. If you just look at the numbers, they may not jump out to you that much. But he's been splitting carries all year long, essentially, with Melvin Gordon and could very well still put up 1,000 yards. Splitting carries. That's the kind of player Javante Williams has been. But all these two top rookies, who's been your favorite? Let me know. Sertan or Williams? You can't go wrong with either one. I, I am kind of leaning Sertan just because you have Herbert and Mahomes in the AFC West. You need a lockdown corner when you're going to go up against, go up against those quarterbacks four times a season. We'll wrap up the show with some sort of sad, bad news. Uh, the Broncos had a minor-ish sort of COVID-19 outbreak, and they shut down practice today, today being Thursday, and did not have any practice because they placed a handful of players on the COVID list. We'll start the list here with Tim Patrick, the biggest name of all. Luckily, it could not have, it could have been a lot worse. We've seen teams lose their top three quarterbacks sometimes, uh, but not the case. Actually, we know how that was for Denver last year. I was thinking about the Browns this year, but yeah. Uh, Caden Stearns, Calvin Anderson, Tyree Cleveland, and then another starter, Bryce Callahan as well. And then you got some backups, Mike Ford, Bobby Massey, a starter, and Steven Weatherly. He's really come on. I've loved this uh, this pickup from um, Peyton in the middle of the season. But biggest names right there is Patrick and Callahan. Looking ahead here, Week 17, Broncos Chargers. What do you got? Predict the score for me. I, I love to just hammer, you know, be a homer, go with the Broncos. But the Chargers, hey, I said the Chargers would lose to the to the Houston Texans a couple of weeks ago in my playoff path video for the Broncos. So shout out to me. Uh, but I think the Chargers get a rebound win here against the Broncos team that just doesn't seem to have much to play for. Well, the Chargers have a lot to play for. Let me know what you're thinking down below.